Hey guys, my name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent and today we're doing a full hands-on review of the new Fitbit Charge HR. So now that I've had the chance to put the Charge HR through all of its paces, I wanted to just take a moment to explain how I'm going to be doing this review. So first off, I'm going to be looking at the overall design and aesthetics and build quality of the device. Then I'll be talking about the specs and functionality, what the device can do, and then finally the app and data accuracy of the device and kind of break it down into those three categories uh, and hopefully that makes sense for you guys. So let's dive right in with the design, aesthetics, and build quality of the device. So I was happy to see that Fitbit did away with their previous pin style clasp and went with the more traditional watch style clasp. It's easy to put on and take off and it's very comfortable and snug against the wrist. So the device is designed to be worn 24 seven and so Fitbit has done a good job making it light and comfortable so that it's not an obtrusive, bulky or awkward device. You'd hardly ever know it's there. The device charges with an included proprietary USB cable, so one end goes into the device and then the other end goes into a USB charger or your computer, and it probably needs charged about every four or five days with general exercise and use. Fitbit also includes this USB dongle that you can plug in obviously to a USB port on your computer to wirelessly sync and set up the device. Now once the device has been synced the first time using that dongle, you can then sync using the app from that point onward. The band itself is made up of a rugged synthetic material that really does seem like it will stand up to a lot of use and abuse. The only thing that I wasn't entirely happy with was along the edges of the display, the device doesn't have a very seamless transition from the display to the band. There's a little bit of an edge or a lip that kind of gives it a cheaper feeling. I don't think it would affect the performance of the device, but it does just make it feel a little bit cheaper than its bigger brother, the Fitbit Surge. As far as aesthetics, design, and build quality are concerned, I'd give this an 8 out of 10. Now let's go ahead and talk about specs and functionality. The Charge HR is one of the most compact devices to use an optical heart rate monitor, and Fitbit calls it their Pure Pulse technology. Battery life is going to be 4 to 5 days depending on usage. The watch has two basic modes. It has a workout mode that it will uh, record workout statistics that you can view on the app later. And then it has an all day mode where it will track typical stats like your resting heart rate, calories burned, sleep activity, and things like that. The device does have a silent vibrating alarm and it also has caller ID on the watch which is kind of a neat smart watch feature and I'm glad that they've included that. The device will wirelessly sync via Bluetooth to your PC or Mac using the dongle or you can just sync directly to the app using your smartphone. So the Charge HR is full of a lot of features and yet at the same time it's a very minimalist and simple and easy to operate device. So the real question is, do all of these functions and sensors work and provide useful data? So the Charge HR in my opinion really is second to none when it comes to tracking all day statistics. Uh, it does a fantastic job getting your, your uh, all, all day calories, your steps, and tracking things like your base heart rate throughout the day with its all day heart rate tracking abilities. So if you're looking for a fitness tracker that does a great job kind of giving you a flyover, big picture view of your all day stats and health, this is definitely a great device for that. The caller ID feature is great. You can have your phone muted and in your pocket and uh, your watch will vibrate and throw up the caller ID. So that's a fantastic feature. I'm glad they added that. Now I did go ahead and take this out for several different kinds of workouts, uh, you know, lifting weights, jogging to put the heart rate through its paces and find out whether or not it was accurate. And I put it against what has become kind of my daily fitness tracker right now, the Mio Fuse, and I wanted to compare the data against the Mio just to find out how it did on heart rate tracking. And I came up against a similar issue as I did with the Fitbit Surge and uh, really just about any other fitness tracker that has an optical heart rate on the wrist. And that is that any time you begin to have even moderate movement or exercise from the arms, that it throws off the heart rate tracking considerably. And I'm talking, you know, 20, 30 beats per minute off. As you can see in the graphs here, the, uh, the Fitbit was recording, you know, a top heart rate of like 150s, and the Mio Fuse was peaking out several times uh, at about 181 or 181. And so you can see here that, uh, that the data from the Fitbit just wasn't anywhere close to reality during exercise. 
you know, you can see that since both of these devices use the heart rate monitor to help uh, in their algorithms determine how many calories burned, you can see that on the Mio Fuse on that last uh, graph there that it, it said I burned 465 calories and the Fitbit said that I burned 273 calories. So 200 calories off on the Fitbit, that's fairly significant uh, difference on exercise data. Now, I don't think that this means that the Fitbit is inaccurate or that it's a bad device. Uh, it's clearly designed for a big picture of your overall health. So it's tracking all day statistics and it does an okay job tracking your exercise, but that's not what its primary purpose is for. Whereas a lot of other fitness trackers maybe have a design that's geared more towards just your exercise or workout and they don't do quite as good of job getting your overall health and fitness picture for the whole day. Taking a look at the Fitbit app here, uh, you know what, their Fitbit app is got to be the best app on any fitness tracker out there. It uh, It's very easy to navigate. Everything kind of is visible from the main dashboard screen. And then you can select any bits of data that you would want to kind of expand upon. And uh, whether it be your diet or sleep or whatever it may be, you can just select that piece of data and then it will take you to a screen where you can navigate deeper into the data and metrics that you're wanting to explore. So the Fitbit app is definitely an A+, no questions asked there. So wrapping it up, I would say that this device has got to be the best all day big picture fitness tracker device on the market right now. Uh, it does a fantastic job with that. The app is also a pleasure to use and it's a lightweight and very comfortable device. And so if you're looking for just something to track all day metrics and all day data and give you a general picture of your, your health and fitness, this is definitely a go-to device for that. And on the other hand, if you are a serious athlete that's in the gym three, four times a week and you're wanting to get some feedback on your gym and exercise data, then you may want to pass this up in favor of something that is a little bit more accurate during exercise. Hey, thanks for watching. Leave me your feedback and constructive criticism in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and hit subscribe to the channel so you can check out all of our future videos. Also, check us out on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, sometimes I put content out on Facebook or Twitter that you won't find here on YouTube. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm Eric, the Techie Agent, and we'll catch you next time.